Hello aviators, Sky here. So boys and girls, here it is, the main character of this whole story. Our today's journey will be long and interesting. Fasten your seatbelts, let's fly. Boeing 787 Dreamliner is a family of wide-body, long-haul airliners developed by Boeing in the early 2000s. The first commercial airliner with a radically increased proportion of composite materials in the design. And like this wasn't enough, it introduced a huge number of other interesting innovations. In the late 1990s, Boeing actively promoted its newest airliner, 777. It was gorgeous and very advanced, unlike the other two wide-body models. The Boeing 747 and 767 were not impressing anyone for a long time. They had to be modernized or replaced. This work started in the early 2000s. The flagship of the line had to be upgraded with the 747X program. The Boeing 767 was supposed to retire, giving way to a completely new and first of its kind Sonic Cruiser Transsonic Airliner. Having similar capacity, the new aircraft could reach a significantly higher speed, 1100 km per hour. It wasn't breaking the sound barrier, but it was very promising, especially for the passengers who don't like to watch movies for 12-15 hours straight. However, the events of the beginning of the 21st century prevented the project from success. The fuel prices soared, and the air transportation market shrank. The idea of a high-speed airliner was good, of course, but fuel efficiency proved to be more important. The Sonic Cruiser, being a revolutionary plane, contained a large number of risks, and its high-speed capabilities were now compensated by a huge fuel appetite. In 2002, the project was officially cancelled. However, many technologies were not forgotten. In just a month, Boeing announced the program 7E7. It was supposed to be a classic plane, but with application of the Sonic Cruiser elements. The idea of the new project was the creation of a long-haul and very economically efficient airliner, capable of flying to small airports without working with hubs, the so-called point-to-point -point transit. The letter E in the index is usually considered to stand for efficient or environmentally friendly, or simply 8. In the summer of 2003, after a branding competition, the company chose the name Dreamliner. In 2004, the Japanese airline All Nippon Airways ANA, became the starting customer, signing a contract for 50 aircraft. Boeing was supposed to create two models, 787-3 and 787-8. The Model 9 was expected to appear in a few more years. Sales went well. A year later, Dreamliner already had a portfolio of orders for 237 units. As a power plant, the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 and General Electric GENX engines were chosen. According to the developers, the plane should be 20% more efficient than the 767. The aircraft assembly, of course, was to be conducted in Everett. At the same time, Boeing significantly expanded the capabilities of its contractors, who could now manufacture rather complex components. This greatly simplified and accelerated the final assembly. Despite a lot of problems in the initial stage of the project, in the future this scheme began to justify itself. The network of the Boeing 787 contractors is considered one of the most complex in the history of aviation. So, what is foreign in Dreamliner? Software – HCL Enterprise Wiring – Labinal Passenger doors – Latiqueur Floor beams – TAL Manufacturing Solutions Cargo doors and interior doors – Saab AB Fuselage sections – Global Aeronautica Kawasaki Heavy Industries, Korean Air, Central Wing Box and Wing Console, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, Horizontal Stabilizers, Alenia Armaki and Korean Airspace Industries, Wingtips, Fairings of Mechanization, Wheel Weld Bulkhead, Longerons, Korean Air, Landing Gear, Monsieur Bugatti Doughty, Titanium Elements of the Airframe, Avisma and Ural Boeing Manufacturing. I especially have to note the huge role of Japan in the project. In fact, about 35% of all elements and systems of the Boeing 787 come from the country of the rising sun. Japanese experts participated in the development of the airliner, and Boeing saved money on significant tax benefits from Tokyo. To increase the speed of parts deliveries from geographically remote suppliers, Boeing modified four 747-400 planes. 
Yes, those 747 LCF Dreamlifter I made a video about a while ago. They can transport wings, fuselage sections and other large elements. The final assembly of the first prototypes was started in Everett in 2007. The company had difficulties with the weight of the structure. The first airliners turned out heavier than they should have been. In addition, despite the innovative production process, the demand for the aircraft was so great that Boeing had to expand production. Problem was that the Everett plant had nowhere to expand. And then the heirs of William Boeing found a nearby site. Well, not really nearby, at the other end of the US, in the city of Charleston, South Carolina. Construction of the plant near the city airport began in 2009. In July 2007, the first Boeing 787 prototype passed the solemn rollout ceremony. At that time, it had contracts for 677 units, which was a record among Twin Isle commercial airliners. The airliner had problems with the flight's preparation. Resolving the difficulties with suppliers and the coordination of the specifications took a long time. Problems were also caused by a huge number of innovations, which meant a much more complicated test and certification program. The engines this time did not fail. In 2007, the new Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 engine was certified. Six months later, the certificate was granted to General Electric GENX-1B engine. Finally, in December 2009, with a two-year delay from the original schedule, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner made its maiden flight from the Payne Field Airport. Six planes at once took part in the flight test program, four equipped with Trent engines and two with GENX engines. A little later, two more planes were added to accelerate the work. The tests were not easy. The certification lasted a year and a half. By the time of the test conclusion, Boeing had already prepared production at the plants in Everett and Charleston. It was assumed that the plants would be able to produce 10 aircraft per month. However, because of the plan to dramatically increase the pace of production, the company had problems with the labor unions. The first Boeing 787 left the plant in Charleston in the spring of 2012. A few months before that, one of the prototypes had made a test flight for a maximum distance from Everett to Dhaka, Bangladesh. The plane flew 10,710 miles, breaking the A330 record in this class, though the absolute record for the commercial airliners remained with the Boeing 777-200LR, 11,664 miles. The first airliner was delivered to ANA in September 2011. A few weeks later, the plane started commercial flights from Tokyo to Hong Kong. Tickets for the first flight were sold out at an auction, and the most expensive of them cost $34,000, the price of a good premium car. According to the results of the first operation period, ANA stated that the airliner equipped with Trent 1000 engines burns 21% less fuel than the Boeing 767-300ER. Airlines, seeing that the plane is most effective at long distances, started putting it on flights of maximum range that had previously been served by large aircraft, Boeing 747 and Airbus A340. Being smaller in capacity, the Boeing 787 however proved to be much more flexible and efficient. Well, now let's take a closer look at the Dreamliner and figure out why it has become a liner of dreams. The Boeing 787, being, according to the general design, a classic modern airliner, includes many new solutions that decently pumped its performance. Distinctive external features of the new plane include the lowered nose, long wing, the improved raked wingtips, and new chevrons on its engine nacelles. The aircraft is designed for flights at altitudes of 12-13 km, at cruise speed of Mach 0.84, or about 900 km per hour. Not the sonic cruiser, of course, but slightly faster than the 767. Flight systems. The cockpit of the aircraft is completely new and significantly different from the old ones. The interface consists of five large multifunctional displays, as well as two head-up displays already in the basic configuration. What's interesting is that some cockpit elements, developed by Rockwell Collins, are also used on a number of other new airliners, such as the MC-21 and the Comax C-919. The classic yoke remained in the new cockpit, no side sticks on Boeing airliners. Of course, the Dreamliner has a full-fledged fly-by-wire system. Nothing revolutionary here. In fact, this is an improved version of the systems from the Boeing 777. 
Another matter is the IT systems. To ensure the significantly increased data transmit, a new Ethernet system is used, and part of this network is used to connect passengers to the internet in flight. The aircraft is equipped with an automated system of flight stabilization in conditions of turbulence. The system is new for civilian aviation, and was originally created to ensure the stability of flight of the B-2 Spirit bombers. Power System the main feature of the Boeing 787's onboard energy complex is a completely new electric architecture. The electrical system, with a total capacity of almost 1.5 megawatts, is being actively used in stabilizers, engine start systems and brakes, which made it possible to simplify the hydraulics. A large and famous innovation of the liner is often considered the active use of batteries, but it is worth dispelling the common opinion that the Boeing 787 is entirely powered by storage batteries, like some Tesla. The increased energy consumption also increased the need for its sources. The power system of the airliner has seven generators at once, two in each engine, two in the APU, and one in an emergency turbine. Lithium-ion batteries are supplied by the Japanese corporation GS Yuasa. The battery complex is made up of two batteries weighing 29 kilograms. The first battery is the main one. It is used to provide power supply to the aircraft on the ground. The second battery is used to start the engines and to support auxiliary systems. The use of lithium-ion batteries made it possible to simplify the maintenance and increase the efficiency of the power system. I should note that the innovation was the use of lithium-ion technology. The batteries themselves were used before, but they were heavier and less efficient. Nevertheless, despite the advantages, lithium-ion batteries have a flaw, familiar to smartphone owners. That's right, these batteries burn sometimes. Composites The Boeing 7A7 is the first commercial wide-body airliner that received a composite fuselage, wing and a large number of airframe elements. Nearly 50% of its weight are composites, 20% aluminum alloys, 15% titanium alloys, 10% steel and about 5% of other materials. The advantage of composite materials is higher strength at a lower mass in comparison to metals. In addition, a higher strength allows to improve the design of the liner. The problem of such a large-scale application of new materials is insufficient experience of exploitation. For example, unlike metals, carbon composites do not visibly show damage or the effects of fatigue of the material, which can be dangerous during the long operation. Also, a number of specialists express fears that in case of damage to the fuselage, some elements will be more easily destroyed and in case of fire, the composites will release toxic gases. Some of these fears are too dramatic. Although composites have never been used in such a scale, they are nevertheless not new. In space systems, aviation and the automobile industry, these materials have been in use for a long time. But to calm down customers, Boeing developed a special 787 Gold Care service program. Technically it's just an addition to the usual maintenance plan, but everybody was happy. And the name sounds cool. Engines The Boeing 787 is a twin jet airliner. Optionally, customers can choose models of General Electric GE NX-1B or Rolls-Royce Trent 1000. The engine's thrust ranges from 280 to 340 kN, depending on the aircraft modification. Among the main innovations can be noted the bleedless architecture, an improved noise reduction complex, as well as the presence of two generators in each engine. New saw-edge chevrons are introduced in the design, providing a softer mixing of the jet exhaust with the surrounding air. Now such elements are already applied on the Boeing 747-8, Boeing 737 MAX and the future Boeing 777X. Due to this, the noise level from the 787 in the airport zone rarely exceeds 80-85 decibels, which on average is 10 decibels less than the Boeing 767 and Airbus A330. Despite the fact that the Dreamliner is the heaviest of this group, and its engines are more powerful. Interior The width of the Boeing 787 cabin is about 18 feet, or 5.5 meters. This is much larger than the width of the Boeing 767 and is already close to the Boeing 777. In the midst of competitors, the airliner stays between the A330 and the A350. 
cabins have very wide customization possibilities. Therefore, at different airlines they can differ strongly enough. Arrangement schemes can have variations from 4 to 7 seats in the business class and from 8 to 9 seats in the economy. The windows of the Boeing 787 are 10.7 by 18.4 inches and are considered to be the largest among civilian aircraft. This is due to the more rigid composite fuselage. It became possible to enlarge the windows without additional structural reinforcement. Of course, the bright feature of the new windows is the absence of the plastic shades. Instead of them, electrochromic smart glass is used. Passengers can change the transparency of the windows simply by pressing a button. Another innovation of the cabin is the complete absence of light bulbs. Now it features fully LED illumination. In general, this technology is not new in aviation. As an option, such elements have long been applied on the Boeing 777 and some Airbus airliners. But now it is used more extensively and is already standard equipment. The light can change colors, which is useful for improving comfort. Technologically, the most complex innovation of the Boeing 787 is the complete elimination of the classic engine bleed system, which I have already mentioned. Unlike other passenger aircraft, on the 787 air is supplied by compressors. The new electrocompressor atmospheric system creates pressure inside the cabin equal to that at height of about 1800 meters. Usually on older planes, it is equal to the air pressure of 2 2.5 kilometers. The humidity level in the cabin can be adjusted by the crew depending on the number of passengers, but on average is maintained at 15%. Previously the humidity level was at 4%. Modifications The first and basic version is the model 787-8, which appeared in 2009. Later, in 2013, an extended version 9 was created, and then the largest version 787-10 followed. Initially, Boeing expected to create a rather modest in its performance, but very economical model 787-3. It was supposed to accommodate 290 to 330 passengers and fly at a distance of up to 3000 miles. However, the plane, which was supposed to occupy the middle of the market and replace the Boeing 757, proved inefficient, as it remained too large. The project was closed in favor of other aircraft of the family. Boeing 787-8 is the basic version. The aircraft accommodates 242 passengers in a two-class configuration and 359 in a single-class configuration, with a limit of 381. The flight range for the standard configuration is 7,355 miles. The aircraft is quite popular, about a third of all orders account for this version. The Boeing 787-9, which is now the middle child of the family, is a version with an extended fuselage and increased mass. The capacity is 290 passengers in a two-class configuration and 406 in a one-class layout, with a limit of 420 people. The flight range thus increased slightly and reached 7,635 miles. Interestingly, the increase in range was achieved not by increasing the amount of fuel, but by improving the aerodynamics of the airliner, including the laminar tail stabilizer. With all the similarities of the models 8 and 9, these aircraft actually have a lot of constructive differences. The 787-9 took off for the first time in 2013, and in 2014 it was transferred to the starting customer, Air New Zealand. Finally, the Boeing 787-10 was the result of active lobbying from the Emirates and Qantas. It was not originally planned, but after the creation it ended up somewhere outside its niche, entering the competition with the older models, Airbus A350-900 and Boeing 777-200ER. The fuselage of the plane was once again stretched. The capacity thus reached 330 passengers in a two-class layout, with a maximum of 440 people. The amount of fuel in the tanks of the liner remained the same, so the additional mass cost its range, reduced to 6430 miles. And of course, such a beautiful aircraft could not avoid the attention of the VIP customers. The Boeing Business Jet Division offers models 8 and 9 for VIP versions. Model BBJ 787-8 flies to 9,955 miles. Model BBJ 787-9 reaches a bit shorter, 9,500 miles. Operations In mid-2018, 
Boeing has a portfolio of orders for 1,377 aircraft of the Model 787. Nearly 700 of them have been delivered. In total, about 40 airlines use these planes on almost a thousand routes around the world. In the spring of 2018, Qantas started the Boeing 787 flights on the Perth-London route at a distance of up to 7,829 miles. Well, of course, we cannot avoid gossip about the problems of this beauty. Boeing 787 was not involved in the serious accidents that led to the death of people. Nevertheless, being an entirely new airliner, which applied a large number of previously unused technologies, the aircraft could not avoid childhood diseases. The planes of the ANA and United Airlines were several times sent to the inspections due to the problems with the fuel systems and electrical failures. Later, there were difficulties with sensors, airborne locators and the engines. The most famous problem of the Boeing 787 was the accident caused by the new lithium-ion batteries. In 2013, during a flight on board of the ANA airliner, signs of fire appeared. The plane made an emergency landing at Takamatsu Airport and was evacuated. The tests showed that the fire occurred in one of the battery packs. After a while, the same happened at the JAL aircraft. The FAA issued a directive that would remove the entire fleet of the Boeing 787 from service until the causes of the accidents were clarified. The reason of the accidents was the flaw in the lithium-ion scheme of the batteries. Being more efficient, they are also less stable, and in the event of failure in the operating mode, can catch fire. The batteries, their support systems, as well as the production were tested and revised. Companies took additional security measures and upgraded the battery packs. The cases of overheating after this repeated a couple of times, but after the introduction of all the requirements, the problem was solved. Nevertheless, despite the scandals and problems, the reliability of the liners at the beginning of the flights was 96%, and by 2015 it reached 98.5%. In 2013, these airplanes were spending 5 hours a day in the air, and by 2014 it was already 12 hours. Now the operational reliability of the Boeing 787 is nearly 99.3%. And now about the money. The 787 Dreamliner program cost is estimated at $32 billion. It is assumed that the program will recoup the investment after the delivery of approximately 11 to 1200 aircraft. The production plan assumes to reach a pace of 14 units per month or 168 per year by 2019. By this time, Boeing plans to cut the costs by increasing production and optimizing business processes, as well as increasing the supply cost of the aircraft. In 2018, the catalog price of the Boeing 787-8 is $239 million. The model 787-9 will cost $282 million. And the biggest and most expensive model 787-10 costs about $325 million. If you watched this video to the end, you are awesome. Of course, like, subscribe and comment below what you think about this flying marvel. Fast flights? and soft landings to you.